Welcome to At Your Service, the service management podcast on the CRM Audio Network with your hosts, Business Solutions MVPs, Sarah Jelinek, Scott LaFonte, and Sean Tabor. Rusco is a leading provider of mobile solutions for Dynamics 365. Rusco Mobile CRM is an invaluable tool for the field service engineer working in field service for Dynamics 365. Other solutions from Rusco include Route Planner, which combines geographic and calendar data, even taking into account variables such as traffic and weather, to ensure that your field agents plan the optimal route possible to their work sites. Rusco also offers inspections, which allows you to create, assign, complete, and evaluate field inspections with ease. Inspections enables you to shape every step of your inspection process. For more information on these solutions or to request a demo for any of their offerings, visit www.resco.net. We thank Resco for sponsoring this episode of At Your Service. Welcome to another episode of At Your Service, the service-related podcast on the CRM Audio Network. Well, is uh, I guess I always say it, as always. Uh, with me is Sarah, the Dynamics 365 Diva. How's it going, Sarah? It is fabulous today. How about you, Sean? And I'm good. And you know why I'm good? We have a full house for the first time in three episodes, I think. Um, Mr. LaFonte has joined us. He's not on assignment this week. That's right. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. So big doings. Um, Scott and I were at the uh, Business Application Summit uh, last week. Was it last week? Man, time it, it was. Week. It was. Yeah, last week. And uh, last week as of when we were recording this, actually. but And uh, attended some really cool sessions. Um, and one of the big things is the announcement of the October uh, 2018 release notes. So I thought we should talk about that a little bit. Now... Last April, we did about two hours of release notes talk, and that was pretty thorough, but it was two hours. So we're going to try to condense this down a little bit and take a little different angle. We're going to look at it from what are our favorite features within the release, uh, one or two each of us, and uh, talk a little bit about that. And maybe if uh, we want to expand on some other things, perhaps you can go to atyourservicepod.com and check out some uh, fancy blog posts that we write about our favorite other features. Does that sound good, guys? Fantastic. Awesome. All right. So in general, let's get some thoughts on what you thought about the release as a whole. Um, personally, for myself, so much stuff. Um, 238 pages. It's one of the largest release documents that I've ever seen. Um really starting to evoke the message of the power platform and that finance and operations are really part and parcel of the entire stack, right? From a, from a customer engagement perspective, we really have to acknowledge it now more so than we have in the past, right? It's one of those other things that, that, that uh, customers would implement, but now you're starting to see more and more direct integration uh, more and more direct relationships, so uh, it's pretty pretty interesting. Um, what do you what do you think, Sarah? Yeah, I I'm I know I needed to block off like a few hours just to go through everything, um, and I think you are starting to see that whole that whole concept of it's Dynamics three sixty five. You may be using customer service, you may be using sales, you may be using talent or retail or finance and ops, but uh, I, I do see that big picture here, and it's nice for even if I might not be in finance and operations, just to see what's there. So if I ever need to speak to that, um, I, I do like the effort that they put in here. I love the detail that they put in here so that it's not just, oh, it's a one line bullet on a, on a knowledge article. It's, you know, screenshots. Here's what we expect it to look like. Here's what you're going to see. Um, yeah, I'm super excited. I love when these come out and uh, we get to talk about them and see how it's going to better serve us and our customers. What are you thinking, Mr. Lafonte? I am, uh, I think I'm still a little overwhelmed by the, um, the amount, just the, the plethora of, of updates and not just 
trivial updates. I mean, these are, like, in my opinion, at least in field service and, and project service, I mean, these are some awesome updates coming. And then, of course, with the Power Platform, uh, um, you know, with, with Flow and Power Apps and, and everything kind of being intertwined now and, and even some integration with um, with finance and ops, I mean, it's it's awesome. Um, I think this is definitely a release that gets me excited. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing what all those requirements are that I can, uh, now e- more easily satisfy at, at our customers. So that will be great. And, you know, talking about a couple of the top features that we like each, I think it, it was a little difficult for me to really hone in on my one or two favorites. But there were a couple for me that really stood out, and we'll get to mine in, in, a, in a minute. But uh, why don't we why don't we dive right in and start talking about the, the our top features? So, uh, as gentlemen, ladies first, Miss Sarah, what's your what's your uh, what's your favorite feature of the new release? I had a feeling you'd start with me, um, and and I'm like you. It's hard it's hard to pick some, but you know, since I've I've grown up in a customer service world, that's one of the first areas I looked at to see what's what's coming forward for us. And I think one that was for me um, exciting was, you know, as, as we start to see this really nice, cool, you know, um, unified interface of, of having that capability in, in unified service desk and be able to work with that a lot more. I'm super excited to dive into that and, and see the benefits of it because it is a sh- it's a sharp, clean looking interface and, t- you know, to be able to interact with that from from a unified service desk perspective. And as part of that, you know, utilizing, you know, this is where I'm geeking out, is is mm-hmm. utilizing the edge process for hosting your web applications in unified service desk. You know, there's so many things that, you know, we're still depending upon old IE. Now we're now we're gonna get to use edge. And I, I just think it's gonna help us bring a lot more performance, um, uh, reliability for our customers that use it and end users that use it that you know, it's just going to make that even more of a, a more valuable application for them to utilize from a customer service perspective. And, and you know, and that is a big deal because, uh, you know, we Scott and I have, have a client where we had to go through some hoops before this release to make sure that Internet Explorer worked effectively in their environment. Right. With some of their legacy apps. Mm-hmm. So uh, I agree with you. This is a, this being able to use Edge and Unified Service Desk is, is quite a big deal. Absolutely, Mr. Lafonte, what, what what do you got? What's your what's your top uh, feature? Yeah, I, I think my top feature is uh, really within field service areas now to be able to use uh, some of the customer service features around entitlements and SLAs. So you know we hear a lot from customers you know that have contracts and agreements with with customers that say hey you know we you know we do these preventative maintenance or if you have emergency service of this then we'll be there within x number of hours well that's great and to you know manually monitor it but now to be able to use the slas and then see of course well what are you entitled to with this contract you know kind of ties in nicely with you know potentially maybe later on some warranty management uh, functionality and, and what that is entitled to. Um, so maybe some of our IP will, will play nicely with that. Um, so I'm really excited about, about those two features within the field service area. I mean, there's some stuff coming up with mobile in terms of location sharing and, and things like that. That'll be pretty cool. But those two things I thought, I'm like, man, I wish we had those now. Well, and you know, it, it's kind of funny because some of the things that really got me excited were things that I don't normally get excited about. Um, but the practicality of it, it's, it's like, um, it's a feature that it just kind of makes sense. It's like, yeah, that, wow, that, that really makes a lot of sense. It's not necessarily flashy or anything like that for me, but, uh, it was a really cool, um, feature. And, my my one two of my big um, features, customer service wise, it really has to do with the portal. Um, one thing that's been missing for a while uh, is the ability to manage SharePoint documents. That to me is a big big deal, right? Um, because you know being able to 
have the the similar experience and and if they already have SharePoint in their existing environment, they can store them in, the store documents in a document library. They take, can take take advantage of all the SharePoint features and capabilities directly in the portal, which I think is is really cool. Um, and and it really is going to add to the experience for if you're opening a case doing self service and you need to upload a. Uh, a picture or you need to upload a, a document to that case for supporting information. It's going to make that much, much uh, simpler. And, and then the other, the other one that was a big deal for me, and I saw a little bit of this at um, business application summit is the, is the communication. Uh, I'm, I'm getting the wrong name of it. It's not communication framework, but it's the uh, omni channel framework that's, that's coming in out of the box. It's not exactly the same as, um, you know, Cafe X necessarily, but it what it does is it, it enables, it's, I'm sorry, channel integration framework. I got it, got it completely wrong. Um, but it, it's, it, it allows you to extend Dynamics 365 with whichever providers you want to bring in, right? It has those built-in hooks to make that simpler and easier. So if you want to use a Cafe X, if you want to use a bot, if you want to use um, Twilio, it does whatever you want to bring, you can bring it. And, and there's going to be some hooks to um, hook that in. Um, you know, there's no there's no adapters for the agent desktop. It's going to just bolt in nicely. Um, you, you know, the, the bot framework capabilities are amazing, especially with now with what we can do with flow and enabling bots through flow. Um, it's just, those are two really cool features in my opinion. And I, yeah, I agree with you, Sean. They're huge. Um, I mean, I, I love the idea of the, of the managing SharePoint. Um, we, you know, we have a situation where you know, people are emailing in documents and we're, you know, we're doing our automatic case creation. Great. We're creating, you know, uh, uh, cases from those emails. And then we have to have a third-party service go and extract that, um, extract those attachments, um, upload them to the case. But, you know, being able to have somebody just go to a, you know, a contact us form, fill that in and, and upload it. I mean, that's that's a huge step. And it, it's going to cut co- t- cut down costs for people not to necessarily have to have that third-party tool. And, you know, being able to, like you say, doing the channel integration, that's going to be that's going to be significant as well. Going beyond just phone and email, what can we do? to better serve our customers. Absolutely love that. It really just brings more power uh, to what we can do with the out of the box platform for customers. And it's going to reduce their barriers to entry. It's not mm-hmm. as intimidating bringing in a whole new um, uh, other, you know, vendor and their whole product. We could just, if they have something existing um, in many cases, when you're implementing a uh, call center, for example, there is existing telephony there. Uh, that we now might be able to uh, integrate easier. Um, there, there is sometimes uh, a chat system already in place. Maybe we can bolt that on easier, you know. And and it's going to be, it's going to reduce those um, training issues as well. If we, if we're able to leverage existing investments for the customer within Dynamics 365, so that's really cool. Some other really cool things within the fe- uh, feature set, um, obviously the updates to unify- unified resource scheduling. Um, we're not going to go into the, uh, that into detail, but if you uh, haven't listened to Serum Audio episode 91, um, we talked with Dan Gitler from Microsoft, the, the, the PM over URS, and went into some really good detail on those features and um and what's coming in the October release. Um, we also have for um, unified um, interface, we have an upcoming CRM audio um, with uh, the PM um, from uh, unified interface, uh, Shilpa. Uh, she's going to be on, and um, we have some really good conversation about the unified interface as well. So keep an eye out for that as well. And then, uh, all the Power Apps and Flow related stuff on the Power Apps podcast. We we discussed um, the the latest one, episode three. We uh, or actually no, take that back. We talked a little <laughs> bit about that those feature sets with Charles Lamana um, from the Power Apps team, 
But in episode four, we go into a more of a deep dive for the release notes. So all over the network, we're talking release notes over the next few weeks. So, um, so what what other what other big uh, big hits would you guys uh, like to bring up to mention to our uh, listeners? Well, I will defer to Sarah first, as as you say, ladies first. Oh, thank you very much, Scott. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, you know, it just you know, if you taking it a high glance of of all those features, because it's hard to pick just a few, but I, I love to see the investment um, in something that I'm, I'm I'm passionate about is knowledge management. To be in, we're, we're three very very busy individuals in our lives, and um, to have a have a great way to continue to share that through knowledge management is is key. Um, so the investment that they continue to make in that, and more importantly, in the searching capabilities of that. Um, you know, obviously, we talk about utilizing relevant search, um, knowledge article recommendations. You know, we're you know starting to work with you know some of that uh, very powerful machine learning uh, capabilities to help us you know, better locate the information that we need to serve to our customers. I, I'd love to, I love seeing the continued investment and improvement on that because I know, you know, how you build your knowledge article makes a difference in terms of what you're going to see in your results. So let's try to take that, you know, this, you know, having to do a, a discrete, you know, detailed science behind that to try to try get the results that we want that uh, let's, let's put the power behind, um, you know, the, the capabilities Microsoft has to get us those results. So uh, that's something I'm looking forward to and hoping that's going to, you know, better serve our customers as well when they're trying to share that knowledge and, and make that tool of a, a key resource in any type of customer service implementation. Well, and that really gives a lot more freedom when you're authoring those those uh, knowledge base articles because you're not so hard pressed to define the perfect keywords mm-hmm. to determine whether or not that article comes up or not, and relating it to exactly every single product that it has to link to. Right, mm-hmm. so. Having that relevant search really is a big deal. If uh, if you haven't played with KB articles too much, um, it's a big deal. Uh, I think that's yeah. a really cool feature. It may seem pretty minor, but when you have text highlighted to say this is how we got this article um, because this word is here. Because I, I have so many times when a user goes, why am I seeing this one? This doesn't make sense. Well, you can look here. You're, the word that you typed in, it's it's here. That's why you're seeing it. You know, it's. It, I think it, it's a small thing, but that's what a lot of our end users like to see is why was this one here? Um, why is this showing up? And then, then to find that, I mean, that's, it's a small ask, but it's, it's a huge, uh, huge benefit for them. Yeah, it is. And, and, you know, another thing that, that I saw all over this document was direct relationship to um, ideas from the community, right? There's a number of, of, uh, features, you know, one of which uh, portal configuration migration, for example, it's one of the first ones that I that I came across in the document. Um, it, it, at the end of that release uh, note for that um, feature, it says we'd like to thank, and it says thank you for submitting this idea with a link to the experience.dynamics.com site um, with the idea for the configuration migrant migration and it's a uh, uh, an idea called website copy tool and that it was suggested two years ago by someone in the community and you know you could see right from it there's 136 upvotes for this idea so that really helps you know that kind of input from the community really does make a difference and does go into the release notes and regardless of where we're at Product wise, whether it's customer service, field service, um, project service, sales, uh, portals, marketing, F and O, doesn't matter. You're you're gonna see these kind of ideas from the community, which is one of the first times that I've seen it um, called out like that in in the document, which is really cool. Yeah, that's that's really neat because I think it obviously lets us get the comfort that we know that they're, they're watching and they're listening and they're understanding our need and, and that they're adding right. it. And then it, it's, it's, it's just, like you said, it might be a minor thing, but it's accountability and saying, Hey, we, we hear you. We want to make this better for you. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I, I honestly, Sean did not notice that, but thank you for, for bringing it's it all in. over the place, which is yep. really cool. Really cool. Um, the, the ability to embed power BI um, in more places 
that's also something you see a lot in this document, which is really cool. Um, you're, you know, you're able to do that in portals um, with, with some of the enhancements that are coming with the unified interface and with power apps, you know, you could create a canvas app and embed that into a unified interface um, form in the future. So, you know, and, and with that, a Power BI tile. Um, so we're really starting to see that, that flexibility in the platform to where you could really get all the, all the data and details that you really need at your fingertips, which is great. Yeah. I think that that's one that I think is going to solve a lot of, uh, challenges that, you know, we typically see on projects and we're seeing on some of our projects now, I think it gives us a lot more flexibility and, and outside the box thinking to solve business challenges. Um, especially when it comes to things like, uh, when you look at field service and, and mobility, the flexibility in terms of, of doing things within the mobile app and, and calling out to, for example, a power app or things like that, that, you know, maybe we couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's pretty exciting. <clears throat> so I'm definitely looking forward to that. I think the other thing too, Sean, that, you know, you know got to call out my friend, Ben Vollmer, um, and, uh, IOT and connected field service, the whole, um, announcement with uh iot central and and being able to at least for the first part you know have the integration go through a microsoft flow and connect uh you know from iot central to connected field service for a little bit more maybe uh simplified connected field service implementation versus doing the entire you know azure hub and uh portal and doing all that sort of setup so mm -hmm. uh, you know for those that are looking to just spin something up and see what it does for a smaller organization that could be huge yep and you know and if you're listening to this uh episode before um august 7th 8th and 9th i believe mr volmer will be talking at the virtual service summer camp um about a doing a um in overview of field service um, right there. So uh, I'll have a link in the show notes there for uh, how you can look at the schedule for virtual summer camp. And it's almost here. We're a week away, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can listen to uh, Mr. Volmer um, talk all about um, field service. Mr. And that's Fancy gonna be, Pants. Yes, that's going to be Wednesday, August 8th at 10 a.m. Eastern. So keep an eye out for that. Um, another cool thing we have on the uh, virtual service summer camp, um, we just got announced. We're doing a Power Apps and Flow uh, vision and roadmap session with Ryan Cunningham from the uh, Power Apps team. And that is going to be on Wednesday, August 8th at 4 p.m. Eastern. So check that out. So. Um, between Ryan, Ben, and uh, Matthew Anderson from uh, Microsoft, uh, we have uh, we have some pretty good coverage from uh, from the mothership on the uh, virtual service summer camp. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, very exciting. I have to cancel a lot of meetings now just to attend these sessions. Yeah, I know that's it's that's one of the tricky things, right? I mean, good thing they're recorded. Because yes, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And my, my, uh, you know, my, my wife and daughter are starting their school year next week as, uh, elementary school teachers. And, uh, I'm not going to say which session, but there's a session I might miss because I may be in a frog costume. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> I don't want to know. It's, don't want to know. There, It's the same for the year. You know, you got to do what you got to do. I like to say real men marry teachers. That's what I like to say. But anyways, <laughs> so um, <laughs> I think I think we've covered uh, some really good features, and uh, obviously we'll put a link to the sh in the show notes for the release notes, and uh, we'll uh, also have some links in there for the virtual service summer camp. Um, and again, that's August seventh, eighth, and ninth uh, over at D three sixty five UG, and uh, you could register for free. I encourage you to set up watch parties, get a group of people together um, and watch a, watch a session. We got a lot of great content in the field service and uh, project service tracks, as well as the customer service track. And Miss Sarah, you are kicking the whole shebang off. Yeah. No um, pressure there, right? I, right. Exactly. 
No, I'm exactly. super excited. I, yeah, if we do have a watch party, please please tweet and let us know. Because yeah, if, and use use the hashtag watch party. Yes, and if we if we see you at Summit, I mean, hey, prizes await you. You betcha. Ooh, you betcha. Because it's diva time somewhere. It's, it's diva time somewhere. Sure That's is. right. You, you miss Sean with his fancy shirt on uh, at uh, Application Summit. Oh, what was it? We had our CRM Audio T-shirts. It was pretty. It was pretty fancy. Why? Well, yes, I picture the both of you in it, so that was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. You know what? That's not a good picture. That really, I, you know, Joel takes these pictures, and we're thinking, <laughs> we're thinking, oh, this will be fun, and then it's just ridicule on <laughs> all over social media. But you know, that's the way it goes, I guess. You know, and some of us didn't get ice cream on our shirt, so we're good. Hey, I got that ice cream out. Yeah, I got skills, See, my friend. All the fun that everyone, that all of our listeners missed that by not attending Business Application Summit. Yeah, I have skills. So yeah, we have um, we have a lot of a lot of cool stuff coming up, uh, a lot of exciting things happening. Um, uh, we have a ton of folks already registered for the virtual summer camp, so uh, you still have time to register. And uh, any any closing comments before we uh, kick it over to Agnes? No, I'm just excited. Take it, take a glance at the at the notes, and if there's something you guys want to learn more about, let us know. I'm happy to talk about it on on at your service. Absolutely, and and so keep an eye out for at, on at the at your service dot uh, said it wrong at your service pod dot com site. There it is for uh, some blog articles on our favorite features coming up in the weeks to come. So I guess with that, we will kick it over to Agnes, and she's going to talk a little bit about. Uh, handling documents within Resco Mobile. So take it away, Agnes. Hello, and welcome back to this week's podcast episode. My name is Agnes Valkova. I'm the marketing director here at Resco. And this week, I'd like to discuss more a bit with you in regards to working with documents in Resco's mobile app. So the most fundamental feature of every customer relationship management system is the ability to capture, store, and manage data in a user-friendly way. And it's extremely important for people working in the field, either in, you know, whether they're sales reps, inspectors, or technicians, they all need an easy tool to help them handle the customer data that can be either structured or unstructured. So while the management of the structured data depends heavily on the predefined app design, unstructured data, aka the documents, can have different formats, and every mobile platform deals with it in a different way. Resco's mobile solution allows the user to easily access the existing documents linked to the different records, as well as create new documents of various types, you know, such as PDFs, Excel spreadsheets, images, audio and video files, or any other technical documentation. Even when the connection is not available, thanks to offline capabilities of the Resco platform, it's still possible to work with the documents. And accessing the already existing documents cannot even be easier Simply open up a record, go to notes, um, the section, and see the list of notes with their attachments. And an in-app preview for most popular types of documents is readily available, so there's no need to open the PDF report or the Word document in another app. You can simply preview it directly in the Resco mobile app. And those files that cannot be viewed directly in the application can easily be opened and dedicated Um, in a different application that will do the job quite easily. Uploading new documents within the mobile app is also incredibly simple. In a note section of the chosen record, you know, you can create a new note by tapping the plus sign and then choose the appropriate action of the options menu. So capture the customer's signature, take a picture of the product, or even record a video of the demo presentation. Um, Another useful feature of the Resco app is the ability to paste the documents copied from another mobile app. So if you've just received an email with an Excel sheet attached and you want to move it from the mail app into the Resco mobile app, simply just long tap on it um, on the email and it'll open, you know, the available actions and to choose the option open in mobile CRM. That will be prompted to you, and this will open up the Resco app that will allow you to paste the file and associate it with the select record type. 
Um, when it comes to managing the existing documents, RESCO gives you numerous options. You can either view the document in full screen mode or open the attachment in another app, print the file directly from the mobile device, or simply even send it attached to an email just with a single tap. And if the attached document is not needed anymore, um, you know, there's a possibility to delete it by selecting clear from the options and that's it. The RESCO mobile app also contains a simple built-in image editor. So that allows you to use, you know, um, modify and attach pictures and you can highlight some important details directly on the picture, add quick notes, change the orientation or even crop the image. There's also an option to resize the image by selecting any of the predefined commonly used dimensions. Um, one of the latest features called Document Round Trip brings the ability to open and edit the RESCO document in a dedicated app and then save the updated version back into the RESCO app. So if there is an attached meeting memo Word document that you need to update, simply open it in the Word app and make the modifications as needed and use the send as a copy button uh, to save the updated document back to the RESCO app. Using the RESCO mobile app, it's possible to access the documents stored either directly in the CRM server or in the SharePoint server, integrated with Dynamics 365, for example, and several file hosting services such as Dropbox, OneDrive, or Google Drive are also supported. So if you'd like to know anything more about managing the documents and using the RESCO platform, feel free to reach out to us at our website, www.resco.net, or uh, you can email me even directly at communications at resco.net. Thanks, and see you next time. On behalf of myself, Sean Tabor, my co-host, Scott LaFonte, and the Dynamics 365 diva, Sarah Jelinek, we thank you for listening and subscribing to the podcast. You can reach us at voice at crm.audio. On Twitter, you can follow us, CRM Hobbit for me, for Scott, at FLD service underscore guru. And of course, at Dyne 365 Diva for Sarah. For more information and content about what we spoke about on this episode and others, visit our blog at atyourservicepod.com. This has been At Your Service on the CRM Audio Network, a production of Dynamic Podcasts, LLC.